Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host Bill Spicer. On this week's show we're in Labrador and we're after brook trout. And when I say brook trout, I mean big brook trout. We'll talk about the flies, the rods and reels, and the technique needed to take these large fish. It's going to be a great show, so don't go away. We'll be right back. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. On today's show, the new fly fisher crew visits Igloo Lake, Labrador, located 72 miles southeast of Goose Bay near the 53rd parallel. The area has become world famous for its abundance of large brook trout. Our host for this trip is Vince Burton, owner of Igloo Lake Lodge, and my guide for this trip is Wayne Moores, who has been a guide on this lake for more than 20 years. Igloo Lake is interconnected to literally hundreds of square miles of unrivaled trout fishing waters. The serenity and the tranquility of this unspoiled paradise is beyond description. When you have a um a small brook tumbling into the lake. The water is usually a little cooler because it's in the shadows of the forest, of course, and there's a little more aeration there. As the summer goes along and the water becomes a little warmer and more stagnant, they will gather at these areas. And of course, they're pretty stony areas, so I would guess that come spawning time, they're in position without having to wander any farther. So there's a uh, two or three reasons for him to be there. There we go. Fish on. Now this is quite the, the hot spot. And like Wayne said, the water's a little cooler coming out of this little brook that we got over in the bush there. Now it's just a little brook, but it's enough to change the temperature of the water raise up the oxygen, thus attracting fish. So anytime you're, in, you're, you're searching a lake and it's warm weather fishing like we have right now, search out these little brooks. They change the temperature. Oh, nice, nice. I haven't got to look at them yet. Now, when, when, when they hit, it's just like your line stopping. It's not a, a, a vicious thrash. It's your line stopping and they, uh, so you just set the hook. This is great. I love brook trout. Brook trout are probably one of my favorite. And especially Labrador brook trout. <laughs> They're among, amongst the monsters in the brook trout area. Uh, I'm gonna get, get him out from under there. Come on, buddy. Okay, you wanna come on the other side then. One of the things you gotta be cautious about when fishing from these freighter canoes is the front because the fish will move underneath. Hey, looks like he's coming up now. Well, he's decent. He's a decent fish. Let's see if I can get him up in there. He's staying down. That's one thing about brook trout. Is there not a, oh, that's a decent fish. And they love the zuddler. This is a good fish. Pretty thick. Pretty thick. When they're this big, they pretty much dictate what they want to do and, until they're tired. So you got to pretty much let them go. Keep the tight line on them. But allow them, if they decide to run, allow them the, the line to run. Here we go, we should be getting close. He sees that net. <laughs> yes. And there we go. Now, loosen up the line. We are in barbless hook, so that hook should just pop right out. It is a seven and a quarter. Not and bad you can for read the first it for yourself. Fish. I'm gonna hand you, there you go. This. 
is what it's all about coming to Igloo. Big, brook trout like this. Oh, this is just incredible. Okay, okay. Whoa, and away he goes, all right. Now, right. what a start, huh? <laughs> Not bad for a first fish, huh? Yeah. yeah. must realize that uh, we got big brookies and we have a lot of action. And then of course the other species is the northern pike. And uh, with northern pike uh, we get large pike in there. We've got them up to 30 pounds. And uh, most of them are probably around 6 to 10, maybe around there for pike. And uh, that's there if, if people wants to uh, to do the pike fishing. They may have to go in different places of the lake to get them because they're not available probably where all the trout are. five feet of water. So I'm giving it, you know, one foot per second type of thing. Because this, this fly has a big cone head on it, which weighs, weighs it down. So I give it you know, one, two, three, four, five. Then I start retrieving it. Putting the line behind my finger, holding the rod tip low. And then I'm stripping in probably eight to 10 inches each time and just waiting for the hit. Now, I'm trying to get it close to this rock because I feel the fish are hanging around this rock for some reason. And this is all I'm doing. It's, it's no great skill needed, but it puts the fly in the feeding area of the fish. There we go, another fish. Got to catch up with him. Okay, this one, he hit pretty hard, this one. One thing about brook trout, they're very vicious. <laughs> they definitely go in for the kill. Yeah, it's another brook trout. And this one's really shaking his head harder. Smaller fish will do that. And when I say smaller fish, in Labrador, smaller fish is three to four pounds. Now, I don't know where you can go to beat that. Just about. Now, I've talked about it in previous shows, but what makes a difference, a fly is important, yes, but the presentation is even more important. And the presentation in this particular instance is getting the fly down deep enough. These fish are near the bottom, they're not near the top and you have to count the fly down so that it's near the bottom and, and retrieve it in such a way that it goes right within their feeding lane and a fish only has a small feeding lane. Very few fish will chase other than a pike. A pike might chase for a, a short amount of time but most of them you have to put it right where the fish are. And I should be able to lead him back now. Yeah, he's when you can get their head up like this and into the net. And I'll let you handle that one, Wayne. Yeah. Female, maybe four and a half. And that would be your average fish, I would think, uh -huh, around here. Yes. Four, four and a half pounds. Uh -huh. Which, <laughs> for a brook trout fisherman, that is, that is uh, just awesome. And away he goes. Or she goes, I should say. She goes, yeah. <laughs> Very nicely done, Wayne. Very nicely done. We have a lot of uh, uh, black beers, uh, moose, caribou, and you're going to see you're going to see these these uh, animals, and uh, uh, you know you got otters and beavers, that type of thing. 
Now Wayne just uh, asked me if I had anything with a brighter color. I've, I've, I've just had my, my uh, gray colored muddler or, or zuddler going through there. He says, if you got anything with any color? So yeah, I'm putting on a chartreuse zuddler and see what happens. Like I said, these zuddlers, they, they're weighted in the front. Got a bit of deer hair here. I, I don't know if that helps or anything. I guess it does. And then the nice long zonker tail. So it's half zonker, half muddler minnow. That's called a zuddler. There we go. Boy, were you, did you ever call that one, Wayne? Change the color. I did. I got two strips into it. Two strips. <laughs> oh. Now, line management is everything. I'm trying to get him up in the reel, but he keeps coming towards me, so I gotta, I gotta keep the line tight. Okay, now he's gonna help me. He's gonna run. Two strips, I can't believe that. <laughs> that just shows you, you must be versatile. Don't try to stick with the same thing if it's not working. If it's working, yes, use it. This is a bigger fish. We'll get a look at him here in a second. He went through a cabbage patch there, and I won't come off right yet. My goodness, look at that. And, and they're starting to color up. We're in late July right now, and they're starting to color up in their fall spawning colors, which is a red belly. They'll turn crimson red by August. Well, I always say at every show, listen to your guide. He said, Bill, have you got something a little different color? And I said, yeah. And he says, try it. And sure enough, it worked right away. Got to try to keep his head up for the guide. Oh, he's a fat one, isn't he? Yeah, another male. Another male. Oh, look at this. And there we go. And the fly should come pop right out nice and easy. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's five pounds, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, five pounds. Close to five, yeah. Yeah, lovely fish, lovely fish. <laughs> Pike scars? Yeah. yeah. And away he goes. <laughs> Another good one. The equipment we use today were fairly stout, nine foot, number eight weight rods with large arbor reels and smooth drag systems. The lines used were floating lines, clear intermediate lines, and full sinking lines. Wire bite tippet was used when fishing subsurface due to the large pike that are also in the area. The fish were very active at this time and Wayne suggested I try a dry fly. I eagerly tied on an orange bomber. The fly was purposely dragged across the surface of the water, causing a wake to form behind it. This seemed to excite the fish and resulted in many vicious strikes. Got it. Oh, my oh yes. Oh my God, yes. Oh my goodness. This is absolutely fantastic. Brook trout, large brook trout like this on dry flies. He's not gonna be ready. He's gonna go for a run, I know it. Oh yeah, oh my, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> He's got the bomber in his mouth. And I think, you know what we got? I think we got a tag fish. Oop, oop, oop. Okay, I'll lead him to you, Wayne. Boy, yes, sir. Tag fish. Tag Beautiful fish. Beautiful big male. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Six and a quarter. Six and a quarter. Not quite and as big as that first one, but boy, 22 oh boy. 22 inches, six and a quarter male. And we'll find the number and we'll compare 38, 62. Here's our tag. What a fish. 
What a fish. And away he goes. This is our second time to weigh this one. Yeah. There are two setups we use today. One is a floating line to a nine foot leader tapered down to a 3X tippet and attached to that, the dry fly. The second setup is a floating line to a type three sinking leader with a four foot section of nine pound monofilament attached to that. And attached to the monofilament is 12 inches of wire bite tippet, then the streamer. We commenced looking around for a good brook trout uh, location back in the late 70s. And we just experienced unbelievable trout fishing. And I said, I gotta build a lodge in there. And we were in here in 1980, and uh, we built our lodge, and, uh, and we got some people in, of course, on that uh, particular year. And we started since, we've been going since then, so you're talking about almost a little over 30 years. Every year, it just seemed to increase more. When coming to Labrador, bring a good selection of both surface flies and subsurface flies, such as royal wolves, green leeches, large streamers, orange bombers, and the most effective fly of all, the zuddler. On the points, if the wind is blowing the feed along that shore, there's a little bit of slack water behind, uh, behind that point. So we like to park the boats on that slack water and fish into the feeding lane, I'll call it. Sometimes on shoals, in the, on, or in the open lake and the hatches on, we're pretty well chasing the rises, but it's usually happening on the rocky shoals with three or four feet of water and sometimes even less. Now, I'm gonna start off, we're seeing some rising fish here and Wayne told me to start with a bomber. I just had a rise right here. To me, a bomber is an Atlantic salmon uh, fly, but he says it works very well on the brook trout. Well, I'm gonna find out. Now, we work them a little bit differently than you do on a, on a stream where you want a dead drift. Here, we're gonna actually re retrieve them in and try to make a little wake on the water and see what happens. Got him. Got him. Yes, sir. Not as big as the other ones. Actually, this, compared to the other ones, is quite tiny. Two and a half pounds, maybe. Still a beautiful fish, though. Lovely. He won't be long. I got him in pretty uh, quick. They're in good shape. Now, line management is everything. He ran towards me and I was trying to get pick up some line. Now he's gonna run away from me, he's gonna help me out. There we go, got him on the reel now. Nice. Now, if I 
ride him a little bit there, tire him out a bit. If he goes under the boat, stick your rod right in the water. You don't want it touching the keel of the boat. Oh, it's a nice one. It's a nice one, yep. Big male. Another, another nice male, all brightly uh, shone up with a crimson bellies on them. Yeah. Very good. Get it out. And there's what it's all about. I love brook trout fishing. It's such a good thing. I, they fight hard. They really, whoa, <laughs> and they give you a shower every once in a while, but that's good, that's good. <laughs> I'm telling you, what a trip. My arm is tired from catching all these fish. I highly recommend you come and see Vince at Igloo Lake Lodge to try out some of these big brookies. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. For videos like the one you just saw and more, subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss our weekly uploads of educational videos, exciting trips, and much more.